I'm Martin Nolan of Julian's Auctions. Of course, I'm especially proud to travel to Ireland with this dress worn by Marilyn Monroe. I want you to say happy birthday to President Kennedy. The first time the dress will be in Ireland. It's a fantastic opportunity for the people of Ireland to come out and see this iconic, important part of our pop culture history. In fact, it's also a great opportunity for people of Europe to come and see this dress before it travels back to Julian's Auctions Gallery in Los Angeles. Marilyn Monroe wore this amazing, exquisite dress designed by Jean-Louis, who Marilyn Monroe knew and had worked with. In fact, he designed outfits for the Misfits and for Something's Got to Give. Very few people actually realize that Bob Mackie was the one that did the sketch for the dress because Bob was 21 years of age working for Jean-Louis. Actually, my job working with Jean-Louis was the first job I booked in Hollywood when I was just out of school. Bob Mackie is a, a dear friend of Julian's auctions. In fact, we did an auction for Bob back in 2005, known as the King of Bling. You know, that was the first time I'd ever been involved in a dress like that. But for, since then, I've done probably millions of that kind of dress. The illusion of being naked, but thinking you can see something, but you really can't. So Jean-Louis was a very famous designer. Of course, he had come from France, from a very famous family in France, and worked as Italian in the houses of fashion in Paris. And then he came to the United States and he moved to Los Angeles. He was hired by Columbia Pictures, was involved in creating and remaking amazing people, especially people like uh, Rita Hayward. He sort of recreated her. She was the amazing star at the time, back in the 1940s. And then along came Marla Monroe. She really liked his work and she liked John Louis. She asked him if he could create something truly historical. Talk about historical, where they're still printing pictures of her in that dress. She wanted the wow factor. She wanted to show the world how amazing she was looking. She had lost weight recently and she really was feeling good. And she wanted to show that off to the world. Because it was magical and it was simple, so simple and yet so powerful. So Marla Monroe always had this, uh, and, and dreamt always of performing in front of an audience or being in front of a large crowd of people in the nude. And she, she said that when she was nude, she was like all the other girls. And that, of course, takes her back to a time when she was in orphanages and in foster homes and she wore like the navy blue pinafore that was sort of like the uniform of the day, representing that she was, you know, separated from the rest because she was poor she felt that she was different than all the other girls. And when she was nude, she was like all the other girls. Jean-Louis created this amazing gown, which gave the illusion that in fact, that Marlon was in fact wearing nothing at all, except it was bedazzled in over 2,500 crystals. The crystals had to be strategically placed on the dress to make sure that um, there was no <laughs> fashion faux pas. You know, because it was Marilyn. Marilyn was used to being naked. She didn't care. And she looked amazing. It was May 1962, in front of the President of the United States of America, all of the elite within the Democratic Party, and of course all of the media from New York and beyond, in fact, international media as well. And nobody had ever seen Marilyn in person like that. I mean, that was like unbelievable. It had to be just unbelievable. At the time, Marilyn Monroe was actually filming Something's Got to Give in Los Angeles. And the studios forbid her from actually traveling to New York to perform and to sing for President Kennedy. However, this was really important that Marilyn Monroe attend this event. She wanted to be there for President Kennedy. She wanted to see President Kennedy. And she certainly wanted to sing in front of that audience. As Marilyn was about to walk out on stage, she realized that there was a little give at the back of the dress and so she had to be, in fact, stitched into the dress just before she made her appearance on stage. And if you look closely, you can actually see the stitch right there. The media went wild on the night, especially after Marlon's performance. I mean, the, the people in the back row of, of Madison Square Garden must have been enthralled because it was like a, it was like a vision appeared. There was 2,500 crystals hand-stitched in a, a Rosetta formation on the dress Marlon wore nothing underneath this dress. It was the souffle gauze and the crystals and Marlon Monroe in front of the world on stage. And the light hit those diamonds. And, and I mean, we call them diamonds, but they were like beautiful crystal rhinestones that are all sewn on one at a time. This was a major event for Marlon to perform. And she was making a statement to President Kennedy, but not only to Kennedy, but to the world. 
And how they ever got that, that dress done in the amount of time they had, it was a miracle. Because in Hollywood, that would take weeks and weeks and weeks. 54 years since that event, we're still talking about this amazing dress. I mean, it's remarkable, it's historical. It's truly an amazing object. In fact, it's a piece of art. I, I would even go as far as to describe this as a masterpiece. Marlon returned to Los Angeles on May 20th, but we have to wonder, like, if she didn't get on that plane and she didn't wear that dress, and if Marlon did not sing happy birthday to President Kennedy that night, would we still be talking about her? Would she still be this amazing icon 54 years since she passed away on August 5th, 1962? This dress and, and this, in fact, this moment in time is one of the reasons why Marlon Monroe remains one of the greatest inspirations to contemporary artists today. This performance of Marilyn Monroe at Madison Square Garden was probably one of the last public appearances that Marilyn Monroe ever did. It had to be amazing in Madison Square Garden because you can't do a better dress than that for a Marilyn Monroe to wear. It was the perfect, perfect gown. This is going to be one of the greatest auctions we have ever done at Julian's. In fact, one of the greatest auctions ever. So the dress and the Marilyn Monroe items will go on display at Manor Contemporary Cultural Centre in Jersey City, New Jersey, just across the Hudson. From there, the items will travel to Ireland to the Museum of Style Icons at Newbridge in County Clare, Ireland. The items will then return to Julian's Auctions Gallery in Los Angeles.